delay on the computer but uh, we've got Alison with us oh hello hi, Alison hi, hi. oh Lynn's here as well hi Lynn hi Lynn just trying to make sure we get completely in shot yes what do you think you think we're all right there yeah maybe too oh sorry it turned mine down <laughs> so, so, turn it down turn it on silent maybe come down just a bit oh my god yeah oh this way Move this down. Oh. Can't see. Can't see then, can you? Know, sorry, we're just trying to get the right, just trying to get a good shot, so you're not looking at the, the half the room that you don't need to see. Oh, hi Rachel, hi Lynn, Annabelle. Thank you for joining us. Hope you're excited about this one, this summer long. Oh, that do. There. Oh, hi Pauline. Pauline's on. Hi Pauline. That can shot you see looks. That? that shot looks. I've got one next to me. Yeah. That shot looks okay. Hi Deb. Let me see if I can get people so I can see the comments coming up as well. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got quite a few people. Oh, everybody's joining. Yes, everyone's we're all ready. Us. Okay, so we're going to, while we're just waiting for people to join, we're just going to talk about what the class is on the VIP. Yes. Uh, subscription club tomorrow, the Knit and Stitch Club. Uh, just a quick, easy little one. Yes. So we've got these. Um, Pattern weights, pattern but just weights, some, yeah. some simple pattern weights. Absolutely beginner friendly. friendly. Yeah, we've made them. I've made them in the Jessica Florals. Look really nice. Yeah, Jessica Florals, and they are uh, filled with rice. So if you want to get ready for tomorrow, they're made in polycotton Jessica Florals. Get a bag of rice yeah. uh, or whatever you've got that you want to fill. It. You can fill them with sand. You can yeah. fill them with whatever you want, as long as it makes it heavy. Yeah, just to hold your sewing pattern down while you're cutting it out instead of having to pin. So yes. you can make a load of those in all sorts of sizes yeah. and we've got some we've got some ideas you could use that you could use so you can make them bigger so yeah. in the class they're going to be four inch square yeah these are five inch square layer cakes or so type things so if yeah. you've got layer cake squares or Thin. these tonga treats yeah, and things really like that nice you can make a lovely set of all coordinated, oh, yeah, coordinated make a load of those. Ones, you yeah. can either make them five by five to put in the bigger areas yeah or you could cut them down to four by four like i've used in the smaller areas yeah you could even make them even smaller oh. if you wanted to put them on the little fiddly bits oh, there you go so make a whole range to match and then we've also got uh these liberty these are all hand cut by me yes so so blood sweat and tears <laughs> cut all them so you could use them as well if you wanted to There's these are a 20 piece yeah 20 piece bundle you get two of each yeah. cut to five by five to the best of my ability <laughs> they're very nice they're there was really i think there was only <laughs> six or seven of them in stock yeah so you could use them as well so that's um the project coming tomorrow on the vip so, so let's have a look some more people with us Okay, so are we ready? Should we show Should the pencil we... cases? Yes. So today, we're making a pencil case. Yes, it's nice. Now, this is basically to show you, we know people still have trouble with zips. When we did the little Toblerone pouch, the little zip yeah. pouch, yeah. that was put in very simply. Yeah. This is putting a zip into a pouch, which I know a lot of people struggle with, without those sucked in corners. How yeah. to put nice tabs on oh, the end. Yes, make um, to, to make it look a bit more professional. Yes. It's a good way of extending the length of a zip as well, yeah. if you've only got a shorter zip. Yeah as well so so that's the one we're making that yes. size today but we've got some others haven't we this is in Big tilda ones, yeah you can hang little charms off your zips you can you put a little, um, a little tab tips. we're not putting those in today but you can put those in and then there's another one as well in uh, that's a previous subscription box fabric yeah this one's um uninterfaced yes this one so if you haven't already interfaced your fabric i did put it in the comments underneath on facebook yeah you could do that now mm -hmm. Uh, while we're waiting so you should have um two of two outer fabrics which measure made a bad job do you want to wind that on <laughs> I'm properly that that's on, shocking yes. that then let me turn the iron on <laughs> so you, what you should have two pieces for the outer which measure ten and a half long by four or four inches deep or, or however deep you want it uh, but we said ten and a half by four so two for the outer that are interfaced i've just interfaced yeah. them with a lightweight interfacing and then two for the lining i've not bothered interfacing those again the same size yeah and then two little tabs 
Um, these will be for your tabs, and these measure two and a half by one and a half. Yeah. So it's you could do it at one inch wide, the width of your zip, but it's easier to do them a little bit wider, and then you could just trim it down to size yeah. afterwards. Make sure that's stuck on there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, get the table's collapsed in there on me. On my thing. Oh, ladies, I'll be doing them. Um, Ali's with us. Hi, ladies, watching from Ashford, Kent. Hi. Oh, that's good. So if you haven't already interfaced it, if you do that now, yeah. uh, we'll just give it a couple of minutes for people to do that if they haven't already done it. I think that's all right. This is the lightweight interface. No, it's not. Look, oh. no, stick it at that end. Um, hold it in place for about, I don't know, five, six seconds. Yeah. And then move it across. Don't iron, don't so much iron, lift and place it down. Works better. And check that it's stuck on before. <laughs> you before you start, stuck. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And if not, just go over it again. If not, just go over <laughs> it again. If you're interfacing polycotton, yeah. turn your iron down a little bit. Or put a piece of fabric, um, a pressing cloth over the top so that you don't melt your... I think that's all stuck yeah, down every, now. Everybody has their iron set at a high temperature yes, for cotton. The, yeah. If you're ironing polycotton, remember to turn, turn it down. Turn it down no, just a couple of notches on, no. or put um, a piece of, of cotton over the top yes. so that you don't melt it. Okay, so is everybody okay. ready to go? Shall we get started? I think we'll get yeah. started. Watching from Kent, says Ali. Yeah. Right, so if we take away everything except the zip and the tabs. Right, okay. So, zip and tabs. So I've got two different kinds of zips here just to show you. One's got the metal ends this off. is just one from my stash at home yeah it's got the metal ends you may have to adjust slightly for the metal end i'll tell we'll tell you how and if it has a, these are the ones you buy from us they're just plastic at the ends there's no yeah. metal tabs so it won't matter yeah if you've so got those you, go. you might also be using zip on a roll which is comes on a big long length and yes. you can just cut it down if you haven't nice. already cut it to nine and a half inches long yeah i am using an inch and a half no, I'm not. <laughs> I am using half an inch even. Yeah. That would be a big seam allowance. Yes. I'm well, using inch. half an inch seam allowance. Yeah. Now, typically, you could just use a quarter of an inch if you yeah. want to use a quarter of an inch. But I find um, in teaching, and if you are a beginner especially, a bigger seam allowance is better. Yeah. Because then if you do it too small, you can just go back and do it again. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so, uh, so we've cut. So what you need to do is if you were going to make more of these... If you just want to do it on the size based on your zip, so this is an eight inch zip. When it says eight inch zip, it refers to the actual length of the actual zipper. Yes. Not including not, the bits on the yeah. end. Including the bits on the end, and our an eight inch zipper is approximately nine and a half inches yeah. long. So cut your fabric uh, to your seam allowance. Yes. Bigger, because we're not going to sew the, the zip into the seam. The seam. Yeah. So our fabric, we've cut to 10 and a half inches wide, wide yeah. which is an inch wider. So half an inch seam allowance at each end. So it's weird. I'm talking to Chloe. Because <laughs> you can only see us on the material yeah. girls and you can't see us. So um, whatever size that you're going to resize this to, yeah. if you're going to resize it, just make sure that whatever seam allowance that you're using, if you were using a quarter of an inch seam allowance, you would just make it half an inch bigger. Yeah. I always err on the side of caution and do... A, a smidge, a smidge more, <laughs> yeah, just to just be on the same size, so just to be on yeah. the same size. So, so you're going to take your tabs, so we'll take that take one that away. away. Yeah, oh, also, if we make these tabs on a much shorter zip, if you were making it on a little purse, yeah, I'd only put a tab at one end because if that, you put two gone. tabs on yours, yeah. you can, but you it's very tight, short, yeah. and tight to open. Yeah. Um, so, a way to get around that we can't. We don't have time to show you how to do it really today, but is to do this with your with your zipper. Yeah. All I've done is unzip it, and then this little extra bit at the end, you fold under. Yeah. Can we see that? All right. I'll yeah, just hold it there so. for a second. Yeah. Can we hold? You fold that under, so it's it's it makes like a right angle yeah. here. So you've got a right angle here. And then you either glue, I'll hold it up there, you either glue this bit down, like I've done on mine, just put a bit of glue on and put a clip on to hold it in place and then you haven't got to stitch it. Yeah. Stitching, that's fiddly. Yeah. You can stitch Tricky. it. Um, and then you would sew that up to uh, near your yeah. seam, seam allowance instead. 
and you'd have that at the end and so you wouldn't have the tab but it's nice and neat at the end then yeah. and it's not sewn into your seam i don't okay. know if that's clear yeah but it will look like that when you've done it and you can always cut these off afterwards yeah oh so, brilliant all right okay so just wait for people to yeah and any comments on that? Are we all, all up to speed? Do yes, but it's all. Do you need us to say anything again? <laughs> um, not getting any comments? Getting no, any so we're ready to go. We're all ready, yeah. So, so we're going to start with our tabs, we're aren't gonna we? We're going to start with our tabs. I told you how to do that. So. Yeah, so the first thing you want to do is saw, well not saw, iron down, sorry, quarter of an inch either side of the... On the short edges. edges. Yes. So I'm just going to do that now. And I'll try and get as close to quarter inch as I can. <laughs> move a bit further in. Just move a bit further in. That's it. So just roughly a quarter of an inch. Yeah. Don't go more. Try. It doesn't matter if you go a bit less. <laughs> so just along the short edges. On both pieces. On both pieces. At both edges. And then, once you've done that, you want to then fold it in half. So that both of your edges that you've folded over are neating. And just give that a quick press. And then hold that up. So we're a bit closer to the camera. Sorry, I know. We are a bit further away from the, ca so, from the camera today. On both your pieces, you want to fold your shorter edges down, quarter of an inch, and then fold it in half so that they're both meeting and just give it a press. So do that on both? Yeah, on both, yeah. This is an idea as well if you haven't got um, your own, if you haven't got a mat to put on your table, just a big yeah, piece of uh, excess fabric. Yeah. Or a towel or something like that, fold it up. Makes a great ironing pad. Hold that one in half, like that. And there we go, that's our two pieces done. So are we putting our zipper in? So we're going to put that into our zipper. So if you've got a glue pen, one of these fabric glue pens, this is ideal to use now. Or if you've got a bit of fabric tack glue or this just makes it easier without pins and clips. Yeah. You could put a bit of what? You could put a bit of um, tape in there. Yeah, the tape's really good. Or you cool. could just clip it in, but glue. Show them where you put yeah, the glue sorry, as well. Yeah, so I've just put some glue, open that out, and I've just put some glue. Put it along this edge as well. Yeah, on the folded, I'd like to put it on the folded edge as well. That's pretty. There we go. And then you're going to push your end of your zip right up into the fold. Now, if you were extending, if you needed to extend the length of your zip, you don't have to push your zip right up into the fold so this is right up at so the fold so that's my fold there and it's just in the middle yeah um if you wanted to do uh, like i say if your zip was a bit short or you trimmed a bit off and you trimmed yeah. it a bit short don't push it right up to the fold put it further down if you do it against your mat yeah if you do it against your mat for measurements then as long as your final zip measures nine and a half you can bring it further in or if say you were doing it on an 11 inch yeah. long piece of fabric if you wanted it that little bit longer you could make your the total length of your zip yeah. longer by not putting it up to the fold. You could come further in. Just have it on your mat against yes. your, your measurements yeah. and then you can extend it out to the size that you need. As long as it's your seam allowance width yeah. um, bigger, your fabrics, uh, the, the width. <laughs> as long as your seam allowance, you maintain your seam yes. allowance on your fabric. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, Because yeah, we're not sewing it into the seam. No. Okie dokie. So I'm just going to pop some glue on top of that bit as well. And then we'll just go in to fold it over. Just stick that back down. Stick that down. Now, if you want to hold that in place, you can stick a couple of clips on it while you do the other end. Yeah. You probably don't need to. You can glue. even you can even put your iron on that with a glue stick. You can put your iron on and it dry and it dries it quicker, it sets it a bit quicker. Don't melt the uh, don't do it too long because you don't want to melt the zip because it is acrylic zip. And then we're just going to do the other side as well. Now, when you do the other side, if you open yeah. your zip out. Oh, right. If you open your zip out, yeah. you don't need to do it all the way. If you just open your zip out a bit, yeah. then you can. You want to hold this hold together, together when you put it in and right. press it down. That way, otherwise, it, it, it's, you'll end up it sticking opens, it split yeah. open. Yeah. I find I have that quite a lot, actually. Yeah, yeah. so if you have your zip open so when you do it. Just put some glue again near that fold and on the edge where you fold it over. And then holding your pieces together. Pop that in there. Pop some glue on that top bit there. And fold that over. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. 
all that. This glue pen makes this so much it's easier. It's so good, isn't makes it? it so, there are lots of ways of doing zip tabs, so you might have learned you might have learned another way or seen other ways. I yeah. find this way the easiest. This way is just the easiest. There we go, and there's okay. that. Okay, so that's now ready to stitch. So just you just check it against your mat that it's nine and a half inches long. If you put it up against ten, ten. it should reach yeah. nineteen and a half. There we go. Yeah, yeah. so it is. Yeah. So we know that's that's nine and a half inches long. Yeah, okie dokie. So if at this point you've done it wrong, because you've only done it with a bit of glue, you can peel that off and do and it again. Do it so if you need to, it, well, you've not stitched it, yeah. so if you need to extend it a little bit longer, you can yeah. just pull that undone. With and these just, glue pens, yeah. and then just restick it a bit further out. Yeah. Or you can trim your zip a little bit if it's a bit too long. Yeah. Trim your zip, you zip down a bit, and then still push it up to the yeah. fold. So anything like that, just to make it, just to get it the yeah. right length. So once you've done that, you just want to top stitch. Yeah. Over that. So I'll just do that. Are you all keeping up with us? <laughs> so I would use maybe a three inch, three inch, three millimeter uh, stitch length three to three and a half millimetre stitch length to yeah. do that. Ours is quite big on this machine. For it some is, reason, we don't know why. It's locked on about four millimetres, <laughs> so if our stitches look big, we yes. apologise. We're won't, not sure what's happening. It won't seem to change. <laughs> about an eighth of an inch in from the edge. Yeah. Don't forget, if you've got a metal tab in there, make sure you've pushed it in further. It's going to be away from your stitching. Yeah, you don't want that. You don't want yet. that. Now, you can you turn it round, or you can just bring the end of your zip round. Can you see that? See if you might need to tilt it round a bit. Just this bit. That bit. You can just literally, instead of cutting your thread there, just bring your other zip tab round the other end. And then just sew straight across that one. And it's just one less thread to cut. Okay. So scissors. Yeah. Using all the little spotty the scissors. So cute then. Spotty scissors to do. <laughs> We don't have anything as fancy as a thread cutter on here. No, we don't. No. So we can just then snip that apart. Yeah. And then you can then trim your tabs along the Ooh. sides of your zip. Oh, sorry. sorry. Move the camera a bit fast then. <laughs> there we go. So then trim your tabs at the side now. Yeah. You can just trim it to and match. Yeah. To match the width. I've got bigger scissors if you want them. Yeah. I might use bigger scissors. To match the width of your zip. Yeah. And then that's ready then to put in. Ah, that's clever doing it bigger. Yeah, you because then you're not worrying about doing it too yeah. small. Always do it a little bit wider. See, I've always done mine that little bit too small. So that's a really good tip. There we go. Right, we'll wait for people to catch up. Has anybody got any questions? Yeah, just move the camera down a little bit. Just so you can think you can see it. Are you getting any comments there? I'm not. No, that's what must be doing. Yeah. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Can't beat purple spotty scissors, says Ali. There we go. The comments are still working. Yes. Everybody's, Everybody's busy doing... Everybody's just busy doing the, the tabs on the zips. They are. So, <laughs> should we just move around the scraps out yeah. of the way? Pop them over there. Yeah. So, there you go. So, so far, you should have your zip with your tabs. Zip with your tabs. Yeah. So, how easy was that? Um, Jesus, can you show where to sew tabs again, please? So... It's just at the ends of your zips. You're at each end of your yeah. zip. If you have a metal zip, if you're using, if you've got one, anybody's got one with a metal tab like yeah. that. I haven't got another little piece of tab fabric that we could use. Um, um hang on. <laughs> For the fabric here. Yeah, Pauline says we're all concentrating. Yeah, yes. That's good. <laughs> right, so there we go. Short tab right. again. So, this is your tab piece. You're going to just fold both your ends in a quarter of an inch, give them a press, and fold it in half. And then you're going to take the end of your zip, push it up against the fold, push it up against the fold, and then top stitch on that bit. Should we hold that up? Yeah. Imagine that's folded at the ends. You will have your crease in the middle. Your crease in the middle. This is poly, so it doesn't crease. <laughs> And then you will stitch, it'll be in right up to the fold. Yeah. And then you'll stitch across there. Yeah. Okay. If you wanted it smaller, you can make these smaller. If you want your tab to be a little bit shorter than it is on ours, you can make them shorter. You can obviously yeah. adjust that. Yeah. And you can also, like I say, if you need to make your zip longer, the crease is there. 
but you could sew it like there and it will make your zip longer if you want that shorter zip, that zip to fit in a longer project. Yeah. Okay. If you've got a metal zip like that, again, you can either chop that whole piece off and then imagine you've chopped that off because obviously you don't want to stitch that. You could then stitch it right near. I'd say no, I wouldn't go any closer to the edge than half an inch. You could probably yeah. go up to about half an inch close to the edge. And then this will, you don't have to have the zip right up against this fold. No. And then it will make it longer. Mm. Some good tips there. So Heather. hopefully. Yeah. We're all keeping up. So. I can't just hand you that bit of fabric <laughs> <just there. laughs> Okay. Okay, so are we ready to put the put the zip in? I think so. So we want one of our outers. Okay. So we'll put that in first. Now I recommend, especially if you're a beginner, yeah. uh, put a mark a half an inch in from each end. It just makes just makes it easy. You don't need to do it, just put a, a little mark half an inch in. And that shows you where to line it up. That half inch, that line yeah, there. Yeah. yeah. So just, just use your lines on your mat okay. or your ruler. Mark there. Or you could use your seam guide. Oh, yeah, seam guide. I, yeah. Use my, I tend to use my mat a lot. I use my mat. I oh. like my mat. Half an inch there. Both of them there. This is just an iron away marker pen. You could use chalk. I think you can see it. Yeah. <laughs> and that one there. Okay. And then you're going to line, well, you know how to put a zip in. Line your zip up between those two marks. Yeah. yeah. Face down. With the... Don't forget which way around you might want the zip. It doesn't really, doesn't really matter on this pencil case because it just turns around. No, yeah. Um, but if you are bothered about which way it is, if you've got a nicer piece of fabric at the front, yeah. decide which end you want to zip yes. from. I usually like to go, because I'm right-handed, ah, that way. from left to right. Um, yes, and if I'm so. if I'm doing a zip like that on a handbag, yeah, I'm doing this. If I do this on the top of a handbag, yeah. it I have it hanging on my right. Yes. So I'm going to use my right hand and, and put it and, and open it true, that way. Yeah. If you've got a front and a front and a back, yeah. But if you're left-handed or you carry it over your left side, yeah, you might want What's it that it way, way to open it with your left hand. I know that turn my bag round, yes, and it's the yeah. Right zip so when you put way. if yeah. you're making a bag and you're putting a zip in the yeah. top. Actually put the bag, instead of your brain having to work yeah. out which way to do yeah. actually put the bag against you, how, the yeah. front, how you would have it. Yeah. Um, and so you know which way you would, yeah. you would undo the Not zip. I've thought about that. Right, so we've drawn our marks and we're putting our zip in between the yeah. marks. Face so, down. Face down. And are we going to... So you can either use quilting tape or you can use glue. Mm -hmm. You can use a glue stick as well. What, whatever, what you, whatever you've use? got. Please. Well, why don't you use tape on one and glue on the other? There you go, good idea. So just put that right up against the edge, the, the, the mark, is, yeah. Yeah, just where your mark is. You don't need to go all the way to the ends. doesn't really matter if you do. Right, then use some scissors to put that off. Give it a good press down when you've done it. This is brilliant stuff. Now, if you find, you see, when you're sewing your zip in, yeah. um, you can see the tape afterwards when you've done it. Yes, that happens to be quite often. You've not got it near the edge. Oh, right. right? For a start, closer. go either right up to the very edge yeah. or even go slightly over it. Really? And then fold that bit of tape over. Can I pull if, that yeah, off? Yeah, pull that yeah. off. Yeah. So either go right up to the very edge or overhang the very edge. Right. If you find when you're doing your, your top stitch, you can see a bit of the tape. Yeah. That Overhang really the fun. edge, peel the backing off. Right. Right, peel the backing off now. If it sticks down. Yeah, if it sticks down. <laughs> Just give it a good press. Are you all keeping up with us? Oh, that's a great tip. Good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Definitely. Right, so here we go. All right, so take that off. And then that bit that's overhanging the edge. Is that all right? Yeah. Just push it forward. Right. Onto your tape, push that forward onto okay. your tape, and you've got it's instantly you've got a narrower, a narrow bit, of, narrow bit of sticky tape, so you shouldn't have it showing on the other side. I've done that many because I found that, yeah, that's yeah. a really good tip. That it is wash away tape when all said and done, so if you did do that, you could dampen it, use water on it, and it will yeah. eventually it will come away, but you don't want to have to do that if you don't have to. So, there's my tape, right? I'm just going to put. Does it matter if your tape's gone over? No, a bit? no, it doesn't. So that's it. So zip face up. down. Yeah. There we go. 
we've got. You're just covering the shelf. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm focusing. <laughs> it's, all we can see is your back. Sorry. There we go. You need to move. If you just turn that way slightly. That's that's it. It. Yeah, that's it. There we go. That way. That's Sorry, it. Everybody so that's down. So now you need to put you're gonna put your lining on over that. Lining. Now you could, if you wanted to, run a line of stitches down there yeah. within your seam allowance. Right. Okay. If you wanted to. If you yeah. still found after doing that yeah. that your stitches if your zip slipped, yeah. you could just run a basting stitch line right. down that. If you haven't got the tape or you haven't got a glue pen, you yeah. just want to use pins, you could pin that there and then add if you were gonna pin it or clip it use clips, I would add a basting stitch line, definitely, right. so that then when you put your lining on, yeah. it won't move at all, and then you could you could just clip your line into that, yeah. if you wanted to save on tape or glue or whatever, yeah. um, and this one won't shift because you've already stitched it down, but within your, within your quarter yeah. inch, so about an eighth of an inch. Yeah. Oh, so, okay. but now I would either put another bit of tape or glue or just clip it on, but I would put another bit. Measure your half inch mark as well. Good idea. Put your mark, half inch mark at each end on that one as well. Yeah. Put half on that one. Shall I do it on the front or the back? Uh, the bit, this bit. Yeah, on the yeah, back. On the back. Do it on the back, yeah, because that's the bit you're going to yeah. sew on. I'll just get my half inch for that one. line that up over the top so why don't we put glue on that yeah. one so just you don't even need you don't need to run a whole line of glue just little dabs just, dabs, just yeah. enough to hold it in place that way you make your glue stick last a bit longer within your seam allowance again this glue's wash away as well and then just stick that on give it a good press you could even use your iron to press that on again as well just the edge of your iron there we go and just so again, if you're using a bit of glue like that and you put heat on it, it'll help it stop it. It'll make sure it sticks, yeah. it doesn't slip. Anything that stops things slipping and moving, make sure you get a straight, a straight seam. You could still then add clips after it if you wanted to. Is that right? Just That's check right. that out for that me. That looks right. <laughs> Anything, all these tips to make it so you get a straight Yes. Your zip's only straight yeah. and even. All right, so that's in there. So you could still add clips on that if you wanted to. I could stick a, a couple of clips here and there if you wanted to, or if you haven't got any glue or anything like that as well. Yeah. Uh, my only doubt, the only thing I find with zip uh, pins, pins can warp your zip. Yeah. As you put your pins in, if you're going to put pins in, put them sideways in. I will put pins in this way. Right, okay. Because if you put them in that way, yeah. it push it can push your zip, zip down. down down so you get a little bump yeah. in. So if you're gonna use pins, put them in put them in sideways and make sure the head is away from your sewing machine. The, the right direction makes it easy to pull them out. Yeah. Because I've done that a million times as well. <laughs> you put them in, yeah, and then you've got to stop to pull them to out pull that them way out. when yeah. you're sewing this way. So right. make sure you put them in okay. the right way around as well. Can we got can we see that? Good angle. Can we see? So, oh, zipper foot. So if you've got your zipper foot, if you have a zipper foot, now's the time to put it on. So this is your zipper foot. If you're a newbie and you haven't seen a zipper foot before, this is what you'll have got. Pretty much, this is the one that looks like for this machine. They yeah. all look pretty similar. Yeah. And they've got two side bar, two bars, either for doing to the left or to the right. I'm going to do it to the left. Yeah. So just clip that on. Okay, so that's that clipped in place. Which side do you put the zipper foot? On the left. I'm putting it on the left, Elaine. Because I stitch with it here. If you want to stitch with it on this side, if you are more yeah. comfortable stitching on this side but to the inner side of your machine, then clip it onto the right. Yeah. Okay. I do this way, so clip it onto the left. Make sure your thread's underneath it. Just to make it neater. And then we'll just, you can just sew from the end. Yeah. Just you don't have to sew. You can sew from that line. Yeah. If you want to just sew from that line, but you don't have to. No, just go. So I'm just going to sew from all the way in at a quarter of an inch. Where's a quarter of an inch on this <laughs> machine? Uh, three eighths. So we'll go about, about there. 
So a quarter of an inch should roughly take you up to the edge yeah. of your zip. So I'm just going to do it from the edge just to make it easier. You can backstitch, you don't need to, but you can backstitch if you want to. Foreign machines. I know it's strange, isn't it, when you're a different machine? Yeah, when you're a different machine. Yeah. Right, but so we'll keep it up with us. So when I get up to near the zip, open your fabric here and you can see your zipper underneath. If you've got enough room back there, lift your foot and then close your zip past the foot. See, I struggle with that bit. My zipper never really goes. Is you that because I'm too past. yeah close? You might be just too close to this end up. Right. Just open it up a bit yeah. further. But if it's that way, then just pull it back this way. Right. And then when you get up to it, yeah. then do it again. Pull oh, it back. Right, yeah. So if you haven't left enough room here yeah. to pull it back, just pull it, open it this way, stitch a bit further. Uh, and then when you get to yeah. it, then put your foot yeah. up and put it behind it. Right. So it doesn't really matter. As long as you're just getting it out of the way of the zip. Yeah. Okay. We can't wait to see your beautiful pencil cases that you're making. <laughs> it was my, uh, I did get me, uh, what we're looking my for? pink extra finger out. There you go. You've got one of these <laughs> and you're on a foreign machine. They are it's brilliant. It's not working like yours. You can like that where that's wrinkling a bit yeah. there. Just hold it down it. where it's, there's been no glue. Hold that down with your, your extra finger tool so you're not going to sew through your finger. It's I'm brilliant. determined to get through my sewing life without <laughs> sewing my finger. And you don't need to. You won't sew your finger if you use one of these. Yeah. Okay. Right, so that's it. Off there. Okay. Scissors. Scissors. There you go. Okay, so just trim that. Yeah. And then open it up, and we need to press that then. Just press the seams back. Now, this is the bit where you said you don't press it back enough. Close yes. your zip up while you do right. it. Right. Try not to catch your fabric. Oh, yeah. I know, I always struggle with this bit. Right, there we go. So you need to then press. press. Come with that. Are we all right? Can you see that? Are we all right there? I think they are. Yeah. Pins. So you want to pull, make sure you pull it, especially from the line, you need yeah. to pull it all the way down yeah. and press it, Right. press it away from your zip. So you want to do it on, make sure you do that on both sides. Maybe do the outside first because it's got the interfacing on. Yeah. Um, pull it right away. Right, okay, I'll give it a go. And press that flat. So, turn me over. Does it matter if when you're pressing it that that... You want to if you can, yeah. try and try and roll it that, under, try and yeah. pull them together. You can always, you know, if you if you worry, if you don't mm. think you will, get them to the end there. Yeah. And, you can, and you can pop a pin. A couple That's of pins. A tip, yeah. So that make sure your edges line up. Stick two or three pins yeah. in there and then it won't roll all the way back. So stick a couple of pins in. It's all all these extra things. Yes. They take longer to do, but you're more likely to get a really good result. That's a really good idea. Didn't think of doing that. Right, so I'll just pop a few in there. Put one, in, put one in the middle. Make sure it's all flat. Right, and then give it a press. So that when you're doing it, now when you're ironing it, you can yeah. pull that, pull against that yeah. away, and it should pull both. You used to, both sides should do, be away from the zip. You want the steam, press the button. Just watch your fingers. Is that how you press Yeah, just lift yeah. the yeah, just so the button comes up. No, don't keep pressing, just let you press the button ah. on there so the button comes up. And, and I then it steams. I couldn't use the steam on that one. Just watch your fingers. I'll just do that side again as well. Get a nice crisp line then. And then turn it over and do the other side as well. Which well, not I'm learning a lot today. <laughs> so that should make sure it's well away from your zip. Yeah. Is that away from your zip? I think it's well away. What do you think? That looks all right. See? All right, yeah. So there we go. So that's that's pressed well away from the zip. It's even at the bottom because she's pinned it. Yeah. And it looks nice and even at the top. And you've got a nice even gap oh. from the edge of the fabric yeah. to the zip. Right. Okay. So that's nice and even. Yeah. So now we're going to top stitch that. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to top stitch it. I would recommend three and a half millimetre stitch length. 
Yeah. To four. We're going yeah. to be doing about <laughs> yes. four today. Because the machine says we have to do four. Change. <laughs> about now you've got to do it about about an eighth of an inch away. Yeah. Which is a mark on an inch. When you're on your side of your ruler with inches, if you don't know what an eighth is, yeah. each inch is split into eighths. Right. You'll have the eighth and then you'll have the centre one, which is half an inch, which is four eighths, technically. Oh. Because you yeah. see a lot of measurements that seems that say three eighths. Yes, you do. Yeah. So that's just one mark under half an inch. All oh, right. So I always do it about an eighth yeah. of an inch. Okay. In from the edge. So if you line up the edge, I find the back. I'll, show, I'll hold it up actually. If you line up the the edge here of your fabric with this side of, of your zipper foot, foot yeah. where your needle goes in is approximately oh. an eighth. Or it's a, it's a nice distance yeah. away, I think. And then so as long as you follow the edge of your fabric against the edge of that uh, zipper foot. Yeah. Hang on. <laughs> your threads, your threads get getting, tangled. getting tangled up here. Hang on, let me just do that again. Got some good oh, tips today, Heather, I'm telling you. So many of these. <laughs> There's so many uh, pouches. Let just trim that thread. Yeah, how is everyone doing with this? Are you all keeping all up with us? Are you? Yeah. Okay, so you can go right from the very edge, from the end. Well, I'm just on the fabric. Yeah. I'm going to press a button for my foot to go down. There we go. <laughs> okay, so fabric is lined right up against the edge. So as long as this edge of this fabric here stays against the back of the edge, that's watch that. Don't yeah. watch the needle. Watch, watch that. that. Yeah. Uh, you'll you'll get a nice. Oh, let me stitch it. My thread's just come. Oh no, it's come out. My thread's just uh, unthreaded. <laughs> we have Life to have these things, I know. Right. We have to have Let's them. do it again. Thread it back Sorry, again. Sorry, just thread my needle. I find it worse when you, your spool underneath ran out and you, you know, you're sewing along. Yeah. And then you look and think, oh, it's not actually sewn. <laughs> yeah, everybody watch me now, blind as about, trying to thread. You need help, I can help. There is a threader on it. Really? Yeah. God, who she tells me? <laughs> I mean, I she sat there, there for hours trying to thread it up. Does that go behind there? It's in on the it It goes. Wrong, it's all wrong. Does it go in there? I go and put it in the front. Yeah. It's all oh, wrong. Right. It goes behind that first. Oh, I've always put it in the front. Does that go under? Sorry about this, everybody. I can't see what I'm doing. I'm blind and right. Oh, yeah. oh, you've done it. Done it. It's it successful, Yay. yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. I've never used that either. Have you <laughs> not? I don't know. Really? That worked. It. <laughs> right. Hold your threads. <laughs> yes. Okay, so line it up again. So hold your threads down and then they don't get sucked in. And then, where's back there? <laughs> I'm going to do a, just a couple of back stitches there. So try and hold this. Yeah. I'm not... Okay, so this is lined up here. Yeah. Oh, God, it doesn't have some pull. <laughs> I will get a straight line. Oh, I believe in you, Heather. I don't, not on, the, <laughs> not on this machine. This machine's ancient. Oh, Joel says, I've watched again later. I'm making the pouch embroidering whilst watching now. Great tips. Brilliant. Right. Ab, we want to see it when you we do. It. Who can get it posted on the Facebook yes. page first? I think it was Sam last time. Yeah, I think who it was. It yeah. on, who can get it posted on Facebook first? Oh, wow, that's right. really good, that Heather. Okay, so that's not too bad. So there we go. It's, it's stuttered there. Yeah. It was trying to pull it. Pull really it. pulled so it off to the side. There you go. So that's our top stitch in there. So not very straight, I'm afraid. I don't know. That's pretty good, that. But that was really... And then you just go to repeat all that. Right. So she'll okay. have to do it on the next side. So, so. I always, now this always confuses me. This next side. So, so we're going that way, aren't we? Yeah. So you don't need to yeah. mark this time because no. it should just all line up. So I put some tape down. Again, I'm going to fold it over the edge. I like that tip. That will good. That. This size of uh, pencil case is great for if you've got crochet hooks as well. Yes. Uh, or oh, double pointed needles if you have lots of double pointed needles if you do a lot of sock knitting if you're on the go yeah if you're on the go make a big one as well as just yeah. pencils makeup brush it's a good makeup yeah. brush size as well 
Stick him now, now. <laughs> <laughs> Please stick. <laughs> you can make these any depth you want. If you like this width of pouch, um, this, like I said, this one's five inch. The one we're making is four inch. You could go any size down. You could keep the width, but just add a few, just add inches on. Yeah. Uh, to make it deeper so or shallower. Folding the edge down. Now. Right, there we go. So that's folded down. So we're sticking that. Uh, no. No. Yeah. 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 Right. So this yeah. is right. No, make sure you tell them. Yeah. Right, right side, side up. up. And yeah. then we're taking this one right side down. With your outer fabric yeah. facing, facing down. up. Yeah. And, and line everything up. And we line up the edges here. Yeah, line yeah. up your edges to the best that you can. Okay. You should have a half an inch at each end, so, or thereabouts. Yeah, right. So there's that one on. Press that on. So you can either, like I said, you can either stitch that on, yeah. clip it on, pin it on, or just, op I can't just open up that zip just a little bit. Yeah. To the, while we're doing this, just so we've got a bit to sew before. Okay. Um, and then put your next put your one on. Put lining, and then again, I'm just going to put some glue on that. You do, we're just doing it with both to show you that you yeah. can use either or. Claire says, I'm watching now while working at home and we'll try this at the weekend. Never done sips. That's fairly new to sewing. That's good. If you've never done it, this is the best yes. way to learn. Learn how to do it the professional way. Yeah. First, right at the beginning. There we go. It looks so much better with zipper tabs in. Yeah, I do like a zipper tab. Yeah. Yeah, it just sort of finishes it off, doesn't it? It does. It makes it look a bit more professional. And you can do them coordinate in, in you know, like a contrast, like we've done on, on this one. Yeah, I've got, there's calico inside this one, and then the coordinated tabs on the end. Okay, so there we go. We've got sort of like a, a zip sandwich. A zip sandwich. So <laughs> let's just put a couple of clips on just to be on the safe side. So there we go. So you will see you've got your two wrong sides, your linings together. Yeah. You'll have two linings together and your two outers will be facing each yeah. other. Don't and your zip pins out. And your zip is in between. <laughs> yeah. You take them out after. Yeah. Okay, so now you can either sew it on this um, side. Elaine, sorry, which fabric is next for the next side of the zip? So you've got your your line your outer fabric facing up, put your zip down, facing down on that. And then you'll have your lining fabric facing on down. Top of that. So you've sort of sandwiched it together. Yeah, so when you lift up that and look, you'll see both your linings are facing yeah. each other. And then lift them away, you'll have both your right sides together. And you'll see the zip on the outside fabric. Yeah. So it'll be the, uh, looking the right way. Yeah. That way. Okay. okay. So we'll just give her a sec to catch up. Yes. And then we'll stitch that. Oh, that's exciting. <laughs> Okay. Right, so yeah. Okay, so quarter of an inch or thereabouts. You can always put a bit of washi tape on your machine. Yeah. From that's here. A good oh, idea. Not over the hole, obviously a bit from here. You can line up your quarter of an inch, put a piece of washi tape or painter's tape or masking tape or yeah, whatever you call whatever. it. Yeah. Because it easily pe peels away at a quarter of an inch. You can measure a quarter of an inch away from your needle and stick it down here okay. so that you can then line up. Yeah. Even on mine, I've got marker pen. I even have yeah. marker pen draw with a permanent marker alarm, <laughs> you know, down the front of your machine. You know, anything that yeah, helps. Anything yeah. that helps you get your stitches lined up. <laughs> draw it on your foot. You oh, can... Elaine says I've lost. Where are you lost? Bit right, fast. just do it again. We'll do it again. Peel that off. Yeah, that's only a bit of glue. It's only a bit of glue. Peel that off. Right, there so we here we go. Now we're ready. So we're here. So we've sewn our first bit of the zip down. So this is now right side up? Yes. So we're going to take our other outer. Open your zip up a bit. There you go. Open yes. your zip Open up. Open your zip up a bit. We're going to take our other outer fabric, right side facing up. Put your tape and the glue all over on the top. Glue. We've already done ours, yeah. Take the piece with the zip, turn it round so your lining's facing upwards and line your edges up. Line the top edge of that fabric yeah. up with the top edge of this zip. And then Stick that down. Okay. Then we're going to take our lining piece facing down, so it's right side. So together. tape or glue again? Yeah, tape. I'm going to put some more glue on that. And says, watching and enjoying your tips. We'll try making the pencil case later. Another good lesson sewing the zip in. 
Uh, great, Sue says, great tutorial for those that struggle with zips. You explained things perfectly. Thank you very much. You're very good at zips, Heather. <laughs> I have made done so, I it. have done so many zips. You get better with zips the more you do. Yes. Don't be afraid of zips. A no. lot of people say they're afraid of zips. Don't, Don't be afraid because once you get it. Yeah, that's it's, it. You're, it's, you're away. Is, yeah. Right, so we've glued that down. So now you should have your two lining pieces facing. And your zip will look like it's upside down. Yeah. And then if you open that out, You've got your two outer pieces facing each other with the zip the right way. So comment, Elaine, if you if you understand. Oh, she's, she's out there. there. Oh, right. good, brilliant. brilliant. So yeah. now we're going to just stitch that at a quarter of an inch again. Try not to start on the edge. I don't start on the very edge because that can suck it down into your machine. Come in about a quarter of an inch. Yeah. Put your first couple of stitches in. If you're going to back stitch, then back stitch a bit, and then doesn't matter if you stop, start and stop within your seam allowance. Yeah. You don't have to sew right up to yeah. the very edge because that's going to be a seam afterwards. So you should feel the edge of your zip push up. The, the edge of your zipper foot well, should be. You can feel it pushing yes, up against, against the edge of yeah. your zipper. Again, if you struggle with that. You can always, before you stick all these on, you can always draw a quarter of an inch seam allowance yeah. onto your fabric. Don't ever be afraid, just no, draw, draw, on it. draw it yeah. on. These things all take longer, yeah. but if you're not worried about whizzing through yeah, and doing them in a yeah. super fast time, you'll yeah. get things more accurate if you follow all these little tips and take your time. That's why yours looks so brilliant, Heather. <laughs> because I do, I do all these you do. things. do, do the extra step. I occasionally skip them, but... Right, I'm just opening it up now because I'm coming to my zip. You're obviously, if you try to sew past that zip, yeah. it's going to bump. Yes. It's going to leave a bump in your zip. Um, if you struggle to do this bit, yeah. right, what I would suggest you do is when you sew this on, yeah. sew it within the seam allowance. Don't right. sew it at a quarter of an inch. Sew it further over towards the edge, like yeah. an eighth yeah. of an inch. You should be able to get straight past your zip. Right, right? okay. And then you can go back. And do it again I at know. a quarter of an inch if yeah. you, if you struggle. Yeah. Um. You might still you still have to move this zip away, but if you worry you still worry about things slipping. Yeah. Sew it near the edge, um, and then you haven't got to worry about pins and clips, especially if you haven't got any glue. Yeah. If you haven't got any glue and you haven't got any tape. Sew it near the edge. Yeah. And then go back and sew it at a quarter of an inch, and it won't move, and you won't get that bump. Arrange your right. zip. God, I remember the amount yeah. of times I got that bump round oh, my zip. It drove me. I nuts. always have to lift my foot up and turn yeah. it, turn it around so, so I can pull my. Well, zip if you start up. with your zip further in, yeah. anyway. So now lift your foot. Yeah. And then take your zip back. If you can, you might have to. Yes, see, that's what I. I you might have to. Um, you might have to um, do it further. Mine, yes. I can lift it extra high. I've got a knee lift on my. Yes, it goes on my up machine, higher. So it will go up higher. Yeah. And get past it. Elaine says, we'll definitely be doing this later or tomorrow. So informative. Thank you, ladies. Oh. Okay, so when I pulled that zip now, it pulled this fabric in. It might yeah. pull it off your tape or off your glue. Yeah. That's where it comes in, putting that extra stitch yeah. line if you want to, basting it in yeah. first and then stitch it in. Yeah. And then you'll get a neater line if you struggle with getting a wobbly line. I think mine's pulling away the, on the edge of the... Because this, this machine pulls off to the side quite a lot. <laughs> okay. Yep, I'm just going to chew that off if I do that. So I'm not going to bother. Uh, just trim that off. Yeah. Now, don't worry if it overhangs, it pushes it over a little yeah. bit like that. doesn't really matter. So again, we're ironing So we're going to iron it. those out. So we've got the like this now. We want to unfold that edge, turn it over. And fold your other edge, and again, I'm gonna pop some pins in to make sure that it's yeah, give it a press definitely all flat. Yeah, press it out maybe a little bit first, like that. Press it out first and then pin it. Yeah, what with the iron? Yeah, press it yeah. with the iron first yeah. and then and then pin it out so that when we stitch it, then you know it's definitely yeah. going to be down. Yeah. Done. I've actually done it, yeah, without yeah. the pins, that's brilliant. Yeah. Just give that side a quick press. I'm getting better already. You are. <laughs> and shall I pop some pins in? 
Uh, I'd, I'll be all right. You, you can right, if you want yeah. to do. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I need them. Um, but you could pop a couple of pins in here, to, like we did on that side, to make sure that everything stays lined up. But that has worked. She's done that quite well. That's lined quite up straight. Up. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we're going to top stitch. Again. So again, just line it up with the edge of the fabric. Again. Oh no. Has it come unthreaded again? Unthreaded again? Oh no! Where is it? Doesn't like you today, it does it? Does it? Right, apologies. At least we've got a, a threader. Okay, you make sure your needle things, your needles right up when you're threading. Make sure you press. But that's another thing. Yeah. Some people don't do, and they wonder why the thread breaks and yeah. things. Make sure your presser foot's always in the up position oh, right. before you thread it, because if it's not. It won't go through the tension discs properly. Oh, when you're threading it, you might not go through the tension discs yeah, properly, and that's yeah. what can break it. Right. Break your thread. So, so in that bit, and I've got an eagle threader. Some behind that. Greatest tool. <laughs> I know, mine doesn't work on my machine. I need to. I've got to buy. A, I need, I've got one. I need to buy a replacement bit on mine. I think I've bent it. <laughs> You've used it that I've much. I've used it that much, I think I've bent it. Um, so, right, hold your threads, hold your threads. Yeah. Foot down, down, foot down, pull that up. So that's all committed. Right. That's right. And I'm not back stitching because I don't need to. So keep it flat because this pulls. Get lazy with these fancy machines and all <laughs> yeah, that. Right, no. right. Okay, so both top stitched. Yeah. A bit wrinkled, but top Doesn't stitched. Matter. There we go. So there you go. So we've top stitched. Okay, you can there. see mine's a bit wrinkled there, but this yeah. I'm not used to. Just not used to this machine. No, it, it just would keeps not pulling it. Me like that. <laughs> so okay, there you go. So, so what do we do next then? So next we're going to prepare for the corners. Right. To make the box corner, just trim all these bits off, Chloe. Yeah. Come on. No, I'm not doing my job properly. Ah, see, I don't usually. I've got my cutter at home. Don't usually have all these threads. Not used to it. No, take pins out as well. Yeah, and just chop that off. Right. Right. So now we're going to bring the two outers together. Or oh, open your zip. Open your zip. Right. Well, we're only going to be drawing on it initially, but open your zip now, so we don't forget later. <laughs> yeah. Right, so bring your two outers together and your two linings right side together. Okay, yeah, so like we're just going to draw for the boxes on these for the to make the corners. Now, yeah. a lot of the time you'll see me in videos, I've cut these out previously. Yes, yeah, I thought I'd show you a different way today. Okay, all right. So, when you draw, when you draw on for your corners, you need to take into consideration your seam allowance. Right. So if you want this final measurement here to measure two inches, yeah, and you've got a half inch seam allowance, you need to draw, um, it, it's obviously an inch either side of the yeah. seam. All right, so two inches, an inch this side, an inch this side. So it'll be an inch this side, an inch this side. Right. All right. So, uh, sorry, on the two eggs, it's an inch this side and an inch on the other side. Yeah. So if you want it to, you, so you half that, so it's one, not two. Yeah. But you need to add your seam allowance on because that's taken into it. So you would do one and a half. Right. All right, because that, obviously the seam allowance is taken in. Yeah. So if you only do an inch seam allowance, by the time you've sewn your, your inch seam allowance, yeah. if you haven't taken it into consideration... You'll only have a one inch wide, you'll only have half an inch right. on the side. Okay. So you have to take it into consideration yes. what your seam allowance is in. Yes. So if your seam allowance is quarter of an inch and you want it, you'd need to do one and a quarter. Right, would you? Yeah. Right? Okay. Okay, so draw so on each corner. So we've got this, I think this is an inch and a half. Yeah. Wide ruler, I think, is it? Yeah. Yeah. So we can use this little oh, ruler and brilliant. just do an inch and a half wide box on each one, all for, on all. Four just corners on both sides. The whole ruler like that. Right? Yeah, so it's an inch and a half, yeah. and then that's an inch and a half. So it goes to an inch and a half there, yeah. and the width of the ruler, because it's an inch and a half. You might have got these if you've had a sub box. Yeah, these are good. And just draw them on. Yeah. So that one. 
It doesn't matter as long as you get in the corner more than anything yeah. for, this, for this technique, but just draw it on completely. Use your brain. Away. <laughs> I'm always doing that. So, where are we then? About inch and a half. Inch and a half. Do you want to line me up again? I don't want to get it wrong. Uh, inch, inch and a half, half is the... There. Yeah. That looks an inch and a half, doesn't it? I, I haven't used this ruler I've before. never used that ruler, yeah. But I do love the rulers. That's an inch and a half. Can you see? Yes, yeah, so that's there. there's the half. And yeah. Inch. And are we doing that on the lining? Um, yes. Yeah. Both sides of the lining. Yeah. Well, that one and that one, and then do the same on the on the outers. Okay. I think this is sometimes can be a little bit easier. People might find this easier. That one there. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. There. And the other one. You can do this at the beginning, pre-prep. Yeah. If you were making a few of these, draw this onto all your bits of fabric beforehand. There we go, there's that one. You could cut yourself out. If you were going to make a few of these and this was the size you were going to do, just cut yourself a little one and a half inch square out of card. Oh, right, yeah. So you can yeah. always if you do, it. If you do box corners a lot like I do, just cut yourself some little templates out. That's really good. For the size that you do all the time. And yeah. then you can just put it on, draw around it. It's a lot quicker. Having to measure it. Than having to measure it yeah. every time. The little square ruler is good for this, the four and a half inch square ruler. I need to get one of them. Mm. I've meant to bring that today and I forgot that. Oh no. Right, there we go. Okay. Okay, so now just you can just ignore them for now. Oh right, okay. So now we're just going to pin it all together. Yeah. This is why we're doing our, our zip. So we need to mark for a turning gap. Right. So okay. if you mark that, back the width of your hand. I put my hand on and just yeah, do the outside of your hand. Right, yeah. Your turning gap. On your lining. There and there. Okay, so just mark for that. Make sure I can see them marks. Do that now, then we don't forget to do that later. There we go. And then we're just going to pin this together. You know how to do them. Oh, I do. Do you want to explain? So make sure that you... Pins are clips. I like pins. The lines are together. I, I don't know which I I would there. recommend, right, I use would a pin here. All oh, right, And yeah. you can use clips everywhere else. Now, which way would you push your zip? So you way? push, you push your tab... Push your tab towards the inside yeah. lining. So if you line up your two outer fabrics first, yeah. so if when you pull that back, pull that back, make sure that these two seams here line oh, up yeah. and then put a pin in there. Do that either side on the lining as well. Just make sure those line up. Yeah. That way you know you'll get them lined up. Yeah. Okay, no, I'd, I'd actually go the other way with that. Oh, would you? Yeah, get as close to that as you can. Oh, and go, go down that way. And, and do it that way. Oh, see, I always do it, yeah, the other yeah, way. Yeah, you'll get it neater if you do it that right. way. And then you could just stick one in that side and then yeah. do the same at this end. Let's put one there. Now you've got it, I think it's a bit wider because it's Is pushed it? across, yeah. so. So I'll try my best. Yeah, I wouldn't worry too much. You can always uh, uh, sew it, uh, yeah. sew it a little bit further in. Is it all right like that? Then? Yeah, I don't yeah. worry too much. As long as they get yeah, these corners lined up, if you could line them corners yeah. up, you can because there's no interfacing on that. You yeah, can stretch, stretch it a bit. It. Like that. Yeah. I'll put one there as well. Make sure it goes in the same direction as that one because I'm going to sew that way. All right. That way. That is that right then? I yeah. think, yeah. Well, I sew, start, start there. there. Where do we sew to start? You have to think about where you sew when you put your pins in. So I'm going to sew in this direction around. So you want the head of the pin at this side and the point, point at, at that the other side. side. Think about that when yeah. you go around. Right, okay. So line those two bits up. Push the tab towards the inside, oh, towards the lining. Towards the, yeah, that way, isn't it? And then... And pin those. Pin that. And then you can always clip it everywhere else. Yeah, that's why clips yeah. are good actually. That's this bit is where it slips. Yeah. If you don't pin it. And if you have it in that direction, it's easy to sew over if you want to sew over it. Yeah. Without taking the pin out. There we go. So just pin in that bit. And then I'll just pop it in. So I just put one in there. In there. Yeah. Have a loop in there. There we and go. And just a couple in there and then it'll be fine. Clip it. Yeah, clip it. I'm going to go back to my regular foot 
on my machine. So do that now as well. So there we go. So we're all pinned and clipped, linings together and outer fabrics together. Okay, so we're going to start stitching at one edge of your where you've marked it for your turning gap. Yeah. So I'm going to start stitching here. Just hold that together a bit. So start at that line. Uh, quarter of an inch or thereabouts. Keep going for a button, don't you? I know I do. I keep going for the buttons on my finger, they're not there. All right, so a couple of stitches and then back stitch there because that's the stress point when you're turning it through. All right, so just so I know I'm doing half an inch, aren't half I? an inch, you, yeah. Yes, that's me, right? Hang on. Oh, let's go back over and pull that out a bit. We're just so used to doing Yeah, so used to doing quarter. So eight. So where's half? Half is about there on here. Okay. So back up. So I'm on a half inch seam allowance. Yeah. So mine's going to be approximately <laughs> half an inch because I have another marker on me on the machine. So I'm going to go there. I'll put my pin the wrong way. No, it's just it hasn't got a head. They oh, don't have they... a big head on, so they're harder to get out, aren't they? Okay, so when you turn at the corner, leave your needle in, lift your foot and just turn. If you know where near that you're half, if you're too far in this way, just go back and stitch another stitch. Yeah. If your stitches are too big to stitch another stitch, just yeah. turn your stitch length down for ah. one. Just turn it down, yeah. do one tiny stitch, yeah. and then turn it back up to what you were. Right. Um, and that way you get it in the right place. Now, also, you can also, uh, where your zip tab is, it's right near there, it's at the edge of it. Where's that edge? It's the edge of it. Where your zip tab is, you can put a mark with your pen. Oh. You can just feel it there. Yeah. We seem to have a giant one this side yeah. and none this side. <laughs> Let me just have a look at that. Oh, I've seen it wrong. No, it's I, there. I could actually. have pinned it wrong. No, it's there. I just don't want to sew over the tab. Yeah. This might just be pinned in a bit. It should be there, actually. I can see it there. Yeah. So if you draw, I'm just drawing on that half inch where the tab, put a mark, so that you don't want to stitch past that line. Right, okay. Right. Can you see that? Just feel where your tab is and just put a line Yeah. with a marker pen. Yeah. Okay, so I don't want to stitch that past that bit. Crank that because yeah. I don't want to go over the pin, but I don't want to take the pin out. No, so if you're worried about hitting your pin, yeah, because I don't like sewing over pins, no, but if you take that pin out, it yeah. can slip and then yeah. it won't line up neatly, right? So just hand crank it at that point, and then you can just once you've gone over that, you can then take your pin out, take that pin out. Do you back stitch over? You can go backwards yeah. there if you want to do the couple of to make it stronger. But we're not actually sewing over a zipper or anything, so, so and we're not sewing over the tab, so right. it, it doesn't really yeah, matter that much. All right, so look again. So that's about half an inch. Go on. I don't want to go one more because these <laughs> are big stitches. I know you might be too far. I'm just over. going to pull it back a bit and go yeah. down. You can adjust. Don't forget, you can adjust it to get the needle wherever you want it. Yeah. Lifted my foot, lifted my foot a bit yeah. then, and then hold on to it. Right. To get it where you want it. Yeah. Just it. Quite a lot of pressure on your foot on your machine. That's why yeah. it's rippling like that because there's a lot of pressure oh. on it. That might be why it's yeah, stitching it's four mil. Quite light yeah, my light pressure. Yeah. I'm not to the pressure on mine. I don't think you can. I don't know if that does it on here. Oh, I don't know. On a lot of, on a newer, model, on a lot of yeah. newer machines, say like Pauline Fisher, she's got my machine. Yeah. You can adjust the pressure on your foot. Right. Because that's why that's rippling there. Because yeah. there's quite a lot of pressure, pressure on that foot. That, yeah. Um, which is making it ripple. Right. Um, okay. So, Pauline, if you, with your <laughs> yeah. machine, I've got a Juki DX7. Yeah. Um, I can adjust that. Yeah. This is why it, it's wrinkling a bit. You can also use a walking foot if you find your machine does that a lot. Yeah. Use a walking foot and it walks that through a lot as well. That's going to wrinkle there. I'm sorry, I can't get away from that. Yeah. 
going to the next bit of the tab. Right, so make sure you're to the side of the, the line of you've drawn so you don't stitch through your tab. Need one of them magnetic. We do, pin. a magnetic one. Yeah. Or one on your wrist. Oh yeah, wrist one. Yeah. I need Just to make now that's one. taking me too far over, so I've put my needle up. Yeah. And then I'm just gonna pull it with my foot and pull it back just a bit. So as that goes down and it drags it through again, I'll be yeah. in the set, I'll be where I want to be. Oh. See, I'm afraid of doing things like that. I'm no, scared just mess about. Yeah. No, just mess about to get what you want. Hold the fabric back a little bit yeah. while you're doing so it doesn't do, not while you've got your foot on the pedal, no. but while you, yeah. you know, to get what you want. Right, back stitch there. You can also, as well, if you do a slightly larger seam on your lining, slightly yeah. larger than what you need, except here where it meets the outer. Yeah. It needs to be exactly the same where you meet the outer. Yeah. But when you come into your lining, you can just graduate it in just a little bit. All right. And yeah. round the bottom, and it won't be baggy. Right. If you get baggy linings, yeah. that's another thing. So you don't get baggy linings. So when you've done half an inch, you can um, you can trim it down if you want yeah. to. I would be inclined to then go and trim it down. But if you do trim it, don't do it on the... Where, where you turn yeah. it, where you turn it out because it makes it easy to turn it through. See again, I didn't know that. And cut your corners yeah. as well. Okay. Just leave this bit wider. It, it's a lot easier to turn it in. Yeah. Might not be perfect. <laughs> we don't do perfect. No. Not on the live anyway. Did you go all the way through the corner there again? Yeah. yeah. Just trim it off. Yeah. It's just so you're trimming it down to about a quarter of an inch. Yeah. yeah. Do you want me to go up? Yeah, you might as well. Just, tr just trim them all the way around. Yeah. Even if Yeah, take the bulk out, <laughs> yeah. See, with having a half inch, you've got a lot more leeway. Yeah, you are. To, to veer into it yeah. if you're going wrong, and then you can correct it afterwards. I do like half inch seam allowance. It uses, it, uses it uses slightly more fabric yeah but if you notice when you're doing sewing clothes a lot of them it's, it's um it's five eighths of yeah. an inch so it's over half an inch you could always then go around with your pinking shears and do oh, this i'm cutting through the pin <laughs> <laughs> there we go okay. okay so now before we go any further yeah. you've drawn those boxes on for a reason yeah right? so if you put your hand inside you can push your seams open a little bit but when you put if you just push your hand inside and then bring it out mm -hmm. like this yeah. now a lot of the time I tell you to do that and then measure and yeah, draw and a draw, line because yeah. you've drawn them boxes on you don't need to measure and you don't need oh. to draw a line so where the point is of the corner where yeah. the co corners are of the box yeah that's where you see your fold edge right. should be all right so get it to where the points are yeah on the box yeah so you'll get your perfect triangle pin that yeah pin that there you'll be able to see it better i'm sure, sure <laughs> on this one you'll see it better on on this one because you can see the, the the lines so if you're pushing you see you've got your square there push my hand inside that up inside that yeah and flatten it out Yep. We must have been slightly wonky there because our oh. line's slightly wonky. Oh. But you, I'll do it that side there. You can see it better there. So can yes. you see? There's the corner, the points of your box. Yeah. So make sure they the point is on the fold and on the fold there like that. And that's where you then and pin, just, and that's yeah. your just stick a pin in that. Yeah. And that's where you just sew along that line. Wow. So there's no measuring it. You don't have to put your ruler yeah. on. You don't have to put your ruler on it yeah. and try and draw a line yeah. one inch up well, and yeah. in from the sides. Just draw your boxes on previously and then you should be able to do oh, that. Wow. Do you want to do That's that one? Clever. Right, yeah. Put it over here. So we're pulling it out. Yeah. That's it. So that our points. Your points are in the in this folded bit on the edge. Yeah. Like that. On both sides, and that'll be even then, and then you just pin that. Yeah. Wow, that's so much easier. 
And do the same for the lining as well. Do the same for the lining, yeah. yeah. And then we'll just stitch them all. so much easier yeah isn't it just yeah that's brilliant so this is what i've started doing a lot lately there it's handy go. on a handbag when you're in handbags and things as well so now you just stitch across them stitch across your line yeah now that's i like a fantastic tip <laughs> yeah. what i like to do it twice all right because you do it on a handbag yeah you on a handbag, stitching. stitch on your line and then about another eighth of an inch to a quarter yeah. of an inch inside the corner away from that before yeah. you cut it off so should it happen on your bag and that yeah. that corner busts yeah that first line breaks that second line second of stitching is, is there as well yeah so you won't get a hole oh. so i'm just going to stitch across this, all those now so i'm not going to do two two lines today <laughs> oh, look at this. We're finding look at things on this machine. This used to be your machine as well. <laughs> yeah, I know it you did. should know this. Oh, I've not used it for, for it ages, is, yeah. Right. So just stitch that line. Now, again, I start on the fabric, not off the edge, and then I back stitch off the edge and then back on and across. Same at that end. I tend to stitch off the edge and yeah. then back stitch. You want both your seams as well. It's just, yeah. I think if your seams go in the same. Yeah, if you yeah. can, yeah. Your seams going in the same direction. Yeah. Right. Let's pin the opposite way. <laughs> it's all right. Take that out. So I'm nearly done. Much quicker. Yeah, no, it's a bit blunt, <laughs> but it works. We need to tap your mum up for a new sewing machine. Yeah, I right know. <laughs> I think this was uh, this was my grandma's machine. Yeah. This one. Yeah, it's done a lot of sewing. Extra finger, get your pins out. They're good when you've got your pins in sideways, actually. You know, when you're out, you can yeah, just, just flick them out. Them out with oh, them. wow! That's what I do with all. That's a real good tool. Mm, I like that. I, I use it a lot now. I need to get one. I've still not got one. <laughs> right, have I done them all? One, two, three, four. Oh, yeah, yeah. four. Yeah. Just pins are in those. Oh. Them pins in. Yeah. Put some threads up. Ah, I wouldn't bother. No. It's for the sample. All right, no. It's for the sample. It's, it's going to be turned inside yeah. out. So, so, so I'm we're just doing it. So once you've done that, you, you can either cut them off. All right. Or you can leave them on. What cut you... them off. Just trim them off. Trim About them a quarter off. of an inch away. Yeah. Quarter. Okay. Trim them off. Depends what project you're doing it on. If you're using quite a sturdy fabric. Yeah. Some um it can it, sometimes you can leave them in because you can't feel it. Yeah. But if it's um, something small maybe. Yeah, that's a bit lighter weight. Yeah. Take them off. Oh, has ever done them all? Not that one. <laughs> okay. Then right, turn, then it, turn through. it through. We're nearly done. Yeah. There we go. I love this bit. Yeah, no. It can look as messy as anything yeah. on the inside, but when you turn it through, Just... it looks great. Poke all your corners out. Poke them out. That's, this is good for that. As long as you don't bend it, don't press too hard. It's got a point turner. Hmm. I don't know if it is a point turner, but it's good <laughs> well, for, it's good for well. poking points out. Yeah. You don't want to use anything too sharp because you can poke through. I usually use a knitting needle, but I have poked A blunt through. one. Yeah. You need, if you're going to use a knitting needle, use something like a seven millimetre upwards. Yes. With a yeah, use tip. an eight one. Yeah. yeah, with a blunt tip. Look at that. That's brilliant. 
all poked out there. So all you need to do is then sew up. You don't need me to, I don't think, to no. sew that up. But once you've I done that... I can do it. You can you sew can it up. Sew it sew up, up the hole. Just pull it together like yeah. that. But just pull on it and it disappears. It does go yeah. inside. You can add a bit of your glue yeah, in Yeah, your glue, yeah. To hold it in place while you do it, or you can pin it. And... So I don't think you need me to show that. There you go. Well, there you go. There's your finished pencil case. Unless anybody says they do want me to show it. Yes. We'll give it a couple of minutes yes. in case anybody it does. Keep, keep up with us. So did you manage that? If you've got an absolute beginner, they might want to see it. Yes. But other than that. That looks brilliant. Give it a good, you give it a good press. Yeah. Um, I'm going to press it. I'm that's it. I quite like pressing things. Yeah. It just finishes it off. It does. I didn't know you had to press that button in the Yeah, you press yeah. the button in and lift it, it steams. Yeah. There we go. The other side, you need to press the oh, other side. side. Oh, come on. No, what am I doing? <laughs> there we go. There you go. There you are, your perfect pencil case or pouch. Crochet pouch. Crochet pouch, makeup brushes. Yeah. Anything you want. So you should be able to, if you've managed to do that, and as you can see when you've turned it through, your um, tabs won't be in your seams. If they yeah. are, you've just sewn in a little bit yeah. far. And because you've not stitched, that's another good reason for not stitching the gap up straight right. away yeah. before you've checked everything. Yes. Because then if you wanted to, you, you could go, go back, back, just unpick over that little yeah. bit and just sew it again, yeah. just around there, um, so that it's not in your seam. So that we've done a good job there, they're not in the seam. Nothing sucks in at the edges. Oh. It's all flat and neat. There you, there go. you go. Yeah. Oh, Dodd says thank you, ladies. Yes. You're welcome. So I hope yes. you enjoyed that. Hope you've enjoyed it. Brownie points to whoever posts first <laughs> yeah. a completed one. We want to see. Yeah, so that when we come on the material girls at yes. twelve o'clock, we can <laughs> we show can a picture. Show, it. show yeah. pictures of those completed ones that you've just done. <laughs> Oh, brilliant. Oh, that. Because obviously you, you two make such a great team. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you. We've had yeah. lots of practice together. Yes, now, we, we have. Yeah. So. Oh, brilliant. Do we know where the next stitch along is? I think it could be around 18th of May. Maybe the 18th of May or around then around if we're not. Then, yes. And Chloe will be doing it the next one. It will be me. One. Yes. It will be you. Yes, excited. So, okay. yeah. I think that's everything. It is. So I hope you so enjoyed that. Yes. Um, like I said, post your pictures. Yeah. Uh, uh, on Facebook. And we'll see you we'll in. We'll see you at 12. Yes. If you're joining us then. <laughs> for the, so, the next live. So until then. Yeah. Thank you for watching. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sewing along. I can't get to, I can't get to the button. <laughs> We're at a funny angle, I'm going to have to just. The button's covered. <laughs>